Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome to ET Auto. Wishing you all a very happy new year from team ET Auto. We wish this year brings good health and happiness for each one of us. As we start the year fresh, we are back with a fresh episode of our monthly series where, you, where we bring to you the monthly updates and trends happening in the Indian automotive industry. And now as we have wrapped the full year, calendar year 2023, we bring to you the latest happenings, key insights and the trends for the full year 2023 in our episode called The Year Gone By 2023. For this, we have with us our industry expert, Mr. Arun Malhotra, who's been in the industry for a long time now and worked across managerial roles in several companies. Thank you for joining us today, Mr. Malhotra. Thank you. Now, as we have wrapped up the last year, what are your first thoughts about 2023 of, uh, with regards to the automotive industry? So, it's a great year. I mean, give me no comments. As an industry, industry, it's grown very well and it's done very well. And if there is one indication for the industry growth is the Nifty Auto in this calendar year has grown by 48%. And compared to a normal Nifty of 20%, that mm. shows the, whether it's the profitability, the confidence, the numbers, the future prospects. So overall great year. Okay, so the first thought is the year has gone good. But now uh, seeping uh, deeper into the different segments, like the year has been different for different segments. Starting off with passenger vehicles, uh, SUVs, hatchbacks, sedans, and uh, probably what are the, you know, the sales numbers? What do you have to say about that? So passenger vehicles is clearly an outstanding performance. 4.1 million achieved is something spectacular numbers mm. and it's been consistent month by month mm. right for the last eight months so that's a great year the growth may be 8.8 percent but mm. you must remember it was on a very large base and the previous year the growth was 24 percent so it's a great set of numbers mm. now compared to the segments which is there suv has led the charge suv which was 44 percent on industries somewhere to the tune of 49 yeah. percent so that's a major change mm. but obviously it's come at the cost of sedans which are struggling and one other segment which is struggling today at this point of time is the entry level, the real entry level which we used to call, which had the Alto 3.4, 3.6, 3.8 meters length, that is struggling. But having said that, a lot of these customers have graduated to the next level. Mm. So good year as far as that is concerned. So that is one part of it. The second part is this aspiration is driving, whether in terms of features, whether in terms of technology of safety, security, that's been driving this segment. And that has helped to a large extent. So, and if you look at the price increase, it's about seven to eight percent over last year. Mm. And this price increase is not the actual price increase. It's also customers upgrading to the higher segment mm. and also taking more features. So overall, a good set of things. And this practicality of SUV is being seen everywhere in terms of long driving, in terms of sitting posture, in terms of comfort, in terms of convenience, and also safety is some is a value which people are starting value. So passenger yeah. vehicles is good. And I think one figure which shows, today we are 4.1 million, 2018, 19, which was supposed to be a watershed year for the auto industry, it was 3.4 million. Mm. So we are about 18% higher than that. Yeah. So clearly the segment has evolved in the last few years and uh, this was also the segment which you know uh, came out of the uh, pandemic really fast and now moving on to the two wheeler segment which we saw you know after the second wave of covid really impacting the uh, indian hinterland this segment was the most affected and uh, there was a struggle for the last two years uh, 21 and 22 how have you seen this segment evolved uh, during 2023 per se Two wheelers have done well in, in this year, especially in the last three, four months of the calendar mm -hmm. year. So we have got about eight to nine percent growth, same as the growth of passenger vehicles, but the only caveat is the previous year growth was lower in two wheelers as compared mm -hmm. to four wheelers, and we are still far away from the magic figure of twenty one million which was received in eighteen ninety. Mm -hmm. But I think people have started accepting the fact that so many things have gone into those new vehicles in terms mm -hmm. of technology, in terms of safety, mm -hmm. in terms of even uh, regulations that the price is getting accepted mm. but still there is a segment which is at the very very entry level which mm. is still yet to come over mm. but overall it is good and i think the rural economy which is picking up now mm. and which is clearly showing signs if it continues this moment of positive the two-wheeler can see better better days yes the second half of this year was a positive and for two-wheelers right then the other part is the the lot of action happening in the premium and motorcycles. Mm. They may not contribute large numbers, mm. but they give a lot of fillip, a lot of glamour to the industry, four yeah. to five major players. And sometimes this technology also seeps into the lower level. Mm. So overall a good year, mm. but not an outstanding year. 
right and moving on to the uh, segment that has been in green for some time now uh, there's a three wheelers how do you see that uh, you know uh, evolved in during the last year sri vishwani has rightly said it's the it's in the i would say it's in absolutely dark dark green mm. 60% growth in a segment which had even grown previous year and this is both in the ev part and in the ic engine part yeah. that is phenomenal which is also good sign for the economy because it is showing that last mile connectivity or even at the entry level transportation things mm. are moving positively people coming back to offices to schools to colleges so it's a good indication at the bottom of the pyramid so that's doing very well and it is across technology so that's mm. a positive part of it right. and it should do well in the coming times also right and <coughs> lastly the commercial vehicle segment which is you know believed to move in line with the indian economy uh, how have you seen that evolve uh, like if we see the light commercial vehicles and the medium and heavy commercial vehicles per se so commercial vehicles have done well uh, it's also got a growth rate of about 8 to 10% but i think the heavy commercial vehicles and medium commercial vehicles have done better the light commercial vehicles have not been able to do all that well mm. but overall it is positive so that's a positive sign Moving on from different segments, you know, we have also seen uh, many other trends evolve uh, during 2023. Uh, for instance, like we have been EV, uh, hearing EV is the future for a long time now, and I suppose we are going to hear that for uh, some years to come. So, while there are other technologies evolving, how have you seen the EV growth in the industry, specifically for the passenger vehicles and two wheelers, because they are both moving in different trajectories? So, starting off with the passenger vehicles first. So, if you look at the total EV and what is being said and in the media. I reported it has touched the record number 1.5 million uh, which is a growth of 50% mm. three wheelers is a large constraint of it is about 40% of it so you have to park that 6 lakhs away from the 15 lakhs so we then we come back to the two wheeler and the mm. four wheeler now two wheeler if you look at it the growth is about 38% which is a good set of numbers and uh, but the challenge at this point of time is in two wheelers is that the last 6 months is nearly equal to the first six months of the calendar year so that momentum which was coming from july 2022 to mm. june 23 is somewhat i won't say taper down but it remain constant mm. so there is no growth coming quarter by quarter for the last two three quarters one is this reduction of rate so growth percentage is high but uh, the penetration still is 5% mm. which has been touched eight months back so 4.8 to 5% so you're not able to increase the penetration and one is the price value equation which will impact it roughly but the other part is there is still no alternative product in motorcycle segment which contributes 60% of the industry of the tool industry so effectively you are only focusing on one segment of the industry but uh, things are positive mm. but uh, a frame policy will have a lot to do which we'll discuss in yeah. the future to come as far as passenger vehicles concerned figure looks very nice 110% growth but some a very very small base and still the penetration is 2.2% and we must not forget that there are 10 players in this segment today mm. three to four maybe in the mass segment six are in the slightly premium segment so it's not really going up to that extent and the discounts which are available in december mm. on ev is for the highest industry so somehow it looks good on numbers but there is a challenge and i think one of the challenges in passenger vehicles is people are looking for styling aspiration they're not looking for evs put on old designs mm. so they are ready to pay the price but then they can't compromise on those features it can't be the same model with the ev with ev avatar so i think when companies come with new born vehicles mm. from ground scratch then it will improve but at this point in time it is a struggle and plus it's facing also uh, challenges from other technologies also whether it's a cng whether it is Hybrid, so that's the part. Yeah. Process, so you mean vehicles built on newer platforms uh, are gonna, you know, drive the inflection point in the industry. Plus, for the price point has to be correct. Yes. Also. Yes. The price point, if it goes shoots up dramatically, mm. then again it's a challenge. Right. And uh, talking about the basket of technologies that different OEMs are taking uh, different approaches to, you know, one uh, OEM has totally walked out of diesel. Uh, in the last few years the other ones are focusing focusing more on cng someone's focusing on hybrids the, uh, they also have plans of you know uh, biofuels and uh, bio vehicles so how do you look at that you know the cng sales the demand for hybrids uh, during 2023 what has evolved what is more in demand if you have to like uh, briefly discuss that 
So if I have to look at uh, three things, if I have to take the CDE formula, mm. so there is a consolidation on CNG. It's moved up from 14 to 16 percent, mm. which is a large base. Mm. Diesel is going down, not to the extent which is visible, mm. but it is stagnating. I mean, from the highs of 40, it was down to 18, it's down to 17, and it might go down further. There is clearly an emergence of uh, hybrid. I mean, from nowhere hybrids have come, strong hybrids mm. have come in, and they are nearly equaling the EVs. And hybrids are only available with maximum two to three companies, and that even in the end, not in the entire portfolio. So that's a strong emergence is concerned. Mm. So clearly, you have now uh, CNG is there for people who are cost conscious, value conscious. Hybrids also an alternative which can come to more products and electric vehicles. As far as two wheels concerned, there's only EV available. So if their shift has to happen from petrol, it happens to EV. Three wheelers, if you see, the large three wheelers have been driven by CNG. In the IC engines, 90% of vehicles are with CNG. So electric is there, although we may gloat that uh, there are very high sales of electric vehicles also. But we must remember out of the 50,000 mm. EVs which are sold, 90% are auto rickshaw EVs, which are basically a replacement for cycle rickshaws. So clearly these technologies are playing. And in buses and trucks, we focus on the, especially the buses, mm. we're talking of EVs and it's a small play. But I think the government has done a lot of hydrogen as a fuel which is also emerging. So clearly there are a basket of fuel technologies and then you mentioned this entire thing of methane and other technologies which are biofuel. Mm. So clearly there will be a lot of twists and turns in this. It's not going to be easy. Mm. And EV is not a, I would say the most obvious alternative for petrol and diesel. That's mm. coming up clear. That's one I would say. Yeah, that's right. And that's also how OEMs are aligning their strategies Absolutely. going forward, right? And um, talking about al aligning the strategies, uh, we have also seen the lot of government policies uh, making a play during this year, like uh, starting off with, you know, the six airbags rule, which was supposed to happen last year, 2022, but it happened, it was implemented in 2023. Then we also saw uh, how the PLI scheme is working out and uh, the latest BNCAP norms working out. So how do you see that, you know, going forward and what do you think was the major uh, policy that impacted the industry on a bigger level? So the first policy, which was the BS6 stage two norms, the, uh, driving the real driving emissions, mm. which was expected from April 1st. Right. I think it raised the bar yeah. in terms of emission. And it, I think, put more pressure on diesel. Mm. All the pressure is yet to be felt, but put more pressure on diesel so that mm. real drive emission was a, a turning point in April, which companies had to upgrade their technologies mm. or go mm. in terms of emission. Second was BN cap, and it's not compulsory at the moment, Bharatiya. NCAP, which is for basically for crash tests. Mm. But I think once a few companies start getting it, it will become a talking point. So it may be, look, it is voluntary, but in a way it will become mandatory. Mm. So that's the, the big change. The other is this cafe norms, which is not talked about much. But cafe norm results had come out and the government has imposed certain fines which are not implemented. But if a company has to meet the cafe norms, which is the corporate average fuel efficiency, it can't meet through the petrol and diesel portfolio. They either have to have a CNG, they have to have either hybrid or electric. So yeah. that will also drive the push that side. Yeah, That is and also why some companies have already moved yes. into that direction. That direction because you'll be under pressure to move in. Even mm. if your petrol and diesel segment is doing well, you don't want to be in the eyes of the government and find for that part of it. And then hydrogen government policy, which is natural hydrogen, which is for industrial purpose, but which is a very good alternative for heavy commercial vehicles. Because today we are only tapping the buses, we are not tapping the trucks. Mm -hmm. And in the heavy commercial, 90% is is uh, trucks which are there. So that's another technology which government has invested. We don't need any mineral resources from outside. Mm -hmm. And if it's somehow we're able to crack the code, and the big houses, industrial houses in it, so that's another thing. It's right. a very interesting play which is happening. Hmm. And a lot more is expecting uh, in this quarter and the next fiscal as well. Absolutely. I mean, I mean nobody would have imagined the way the play has happened in this last quarter, mm. the way it has emerged one year before. So probably when we sit next year, I, there might be another twist to the tape. Mm. And talking about the few top, you know, customer trends, uh, how has the industry evolved? Like we have seen the customers going for aspirational, you know, feature-rich vehicles, whether it be two-wheelers or car, you know. Uh, we have also seen uh, the average price of a vehicle that used to be uh, around 8 lakhs, uh, 
four five years back was around you know 10 lakhs and now it has gone over 11 lakhs a little over 11 lakhs right now so how that has evolved what are the top consumer trends or customer trends you have seen in 2023 so one is the regulation thing which is based on emissions and safety which mm. is government is driving i don't think the customer is driving that mm. but other is the aspiration trend yeah which is in terms of technology and it also has something with convenience like adas which is uh, mm. becoming a talking point in this thing and the SUV growth is also a, a lot focused on comfort and convenience and practicality. So that's coming. So people are looking for aspiration to move to newer technologies mm. which either gives them a self, better self-image or makes their driving experience or their personal experience much more unique. So that's something which is driving it very, very strongly. Mm. And the customers, the other thing which is impacting is uh, the way the customers are reaching out for purchasing their vehicles or company reaching out is the digital piece of it. Mm. Today, 50% of inquiries, even in two wheelers, are through digital and it's only going up. Mm. And also, the customer journey is also being tracked, whether by finance companies or through the digital route. So, that's something behind the layer, mm. but it is driving. Yeah. The third is the entire piece of electronic software, which is getting more and more into the product, which mm. drives all these new technologies and new styles, whether it is the touch screens or whether it, it is uh, the ADAS or other safety features. So these are things, something at the back end, something in the front end, but overall a good piece. Prices do go up because of it, mm. but it makes experience much better. No, that's right. Digital is now entering the tier two and tier three as well. Like Absolutely. I remember talking about in 2019 and after COVID it has only, you know, grown and for the good. Mm. Right. And uh, like lastly, we have talked about all the OEMs and the segments that, you know, we see and the numbers that we read about. But what also goes behind is the auto components, you know. So uh, with the rise of the industry and everything, you know, uh, leveling up. Uh, how have you seen the auto component industry moving ahead? The revenues we have seen, you know, in, during the last quarter, it, were, it was record high revenues. How do you see that evolving, like changing with the electronics and the, uh, you know, electric play that you talked about? So auto components have done well. The growths have been much higher than the auto industry. And uh, it's due to because you are putting a lot of technology, whether in terms of emissions, whether in terms mm. of safety or technologies which add to luxury or aspirations. So that's a positive part of it. And I think the Indian industry is gearing up well for this auto industry. So good time for growth. But one caveat which is there is that we still are dependent on China, hmm. which we want to make India as a hub that we have to exclude China and it still is there to a large extent. We are not able hmm. to cross it. So that's a slightly a challenging part. But I think the Indian auto ancillary industry has one unique advantage, which probably the OEMs don't have is that they have a world market open for them. Mm. And India is becoming a hub for auto components, the best technologies, mm. best partnerships. So I think auto components will do well. Although the tier two, tier three will have to raise the bar. Tier one will definitely raise the bar. They have the managerial, financial, technology strength. That's something we have to do. But overall auto components have done well. And if you see the Nifty Auto, mm. the auto component shares are even much higher. So mm. that shows the confidence in auto components. And one thing you want to say in government past part of it is there are two policies and which care is a linkage to even the auto ancillary is the the policy on PLI. Hmm. The way the smoothness of PLI is in electronics or other industries, it's not in automobile. They are too much cumbersome and complexity. We still just seen two days back extension by one year. Not a single rupee has been disbursed at this point of time. And hardly two or three companies have got the clearance. So PLI probably will have to get act together, which will hmm. give a for the Philip to the industry. Yes, yes. So by the next one year, we can see more play into this area, right? Now, covering up the OEMs and auto components, uh, a lot has changed and a lot has not changed. So if you look at certain things that were brought about, uh, the plans were there, but they didn't really work out uh, for different reasons. So what are the two, three uh, specific things that you have seen, you know, uh, lingering on, but not really working out in the practical sense in the industry? So one clearly is this uh, concept which was subscription and self-drive, mm -hmm. that you have part ownership. Somehow it's not working out. It's been there for four or five years. And even the scrappage policy which had good intentions, it's moving at a very, very slow pace. So these are things which are trends which are not working out. But the trends which are clearly working out is this uh, entire thing driven on emissions, safety, technology. That's something which is clearly working out. 
And one of the trends from a custom perspective is we may have a lot of things or aspirations you talk of the Indian customers changing, evolving. Mm. But this entire concept of seasonality of sales, auspicious time, inauspicious time, marriage times, year end, it somehow maintains the same approach. So that doesn't change, which is nothing, there's nothing wrong in it. So the India market is a very complex. There's some things change very fast, some things change slowly, and some things just don't change. That's the way we look at it. And auto ancillaries also the same thing plays out because whatever is OEM that gets reflected in auto ancillary. Right. And lastly, just to conclude, like moving on to the next year, how do you see the outlook for this year in terms of different segments, the sales volumes or the kind of challenges we may say, see, you know, the interest rates and the repo rates or uh, the, the positive factors, the headwinds and tailwinds that you could talk about? So passenger vehicles, I think industry leaders have already talked of it. Everybody is expecting not even high single digit, they are expecting mm. a medium single digit, which is 4 to 5%. Mm. One thing which you must remember, there is increase in stocks at dealership end in December. Not much, hmm. but four to five days. So effectively, yeah. getting even 5% will hmm. be a challenge. Two wheelers, uh, eight to 10% increase, we can see that thing increase again if the rural hmm. economy behaves well. Hmm. It is possible to be 10% because two wheelers are performing much lower to potential. LCV, which has surprisingly not done well in the last year, should have a possibility to move up the value chain. And EV, if we get some uh, products from ground level, something very exciting, interesting, there could be some positive impact on this area. So clearly, different times, uh, different segments will behave differently. But since we are sitting on a good base now, mm. both in the passenger vehicles, in the three-wheelers, in two-wheelers, and commercial vehicles, so growths in double digit looks a challenge. It will be more from the region of 5 to 9% across segments. Yeah, a single digit growth of 5 to 9 percent is what you're saying, Same. right, yeah. right. All right, thank you so much, sir. Thank, thank you for you. taking us through the industry uh, during the last 12 months. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you for watching ED Auto and stay tuned for more updates. Thank you. Thank you.